we're going out to the garden, nature's garden. We're going to go out there and celebrate the forageable community. There's also a larger community that includes all the plants and animals, as the Native Americans say, all our relations, and we're a part of it all. And the more we can participate and engage ourselves in the natural world, the more we realize who we really are. So let's go out there and see what we can find. Come on. Along the Appalachian Trail, searching for the Holy Grail. That's where I found the herb they call ginseng. Deep down in the woods, that's where I got the goods. The herb that turns the autumn into spring. Hear that? Yeah. That's the ginseng bird. Some people will say, no, that's a pileated woodpecker. But you know, it's interesting because pileated woodpeckers often inhabit the same old growth forest that ginseng does. I know some ginseng hunters will say, you listen for the ginseng bird, and it'll tell you where the next patch of ginseng is. So let's go see what we can find. Oh, look. Often ginseng, when it starts off, will only have three leaves on it, a little like a poison ivy. And then, then the second or third year, it'll put out two stalks, two prongs. Ginseng is so famous. It actually started back in the 1700s. There were Jesuit missionaries in China and there were Jesuit missionaries in, in, in Canada. And what ended up happening was um, one of them in China drew a picture of ginseng because the Chinese were very attached to ginseng. And, and so they sent a picture over to the ones in Canada. And next thing you know, the Canadian missionaries talked to the Indians and said, do you have a plant that looks like this? And they said, yeah, we will. And they sent the roots over to China and the Chinese sent back the equal, an equal weight of gold. And that started the great North American ginseng rush, which has not stopped to this day. And to this day, there are people still in the woods gathering this ginseng. And because of that, because of that, ginseng is getting to be an endangered plant. Ginseng dealers are paying sometimes as much as $1,000 a pound for ginseng. It's becoming more and more rare and might even become an extirpated in certain areas. And so I used to take a little ginseng occasionally just to try to use for my own medicinal uses. But nowadays, I know where lots of ginseng is and I go ginseng hunting, but I don't gather the roots. I wait till the fall of the year. When the berries turn red, I'll take the berries. And a lot of times the berries will fall down right below the plant and they'll sprout up and there'll be a whole patch of ginseng, all starting from one father or grand grandmother or grandmother plant. What I'll do often is take with those seeds and spread them, put them in different places so that if any ginseng hunter was to come by, they wouldn't be able to gather a whole bunch from the same place and it spreads the seed. The Chinese often think of the ginseng as sort of an adaptogen, something that helps the body adapt to stress of all kinds. Sometimes considered to be a rejuvenator, sometimes considered to be a plant that actually, actually enhances one's, one's mental and physical abilities. And I've, I've got an old ginseng root back at home, at home and we'll look at it when we get back. Ginseng, 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 ginseng. We got to sing along, ginseng. Makes an older man cocksure, makes a younger man endure, makes an older woman younger, makes a younger woman hunger, ginseng. Ginseng, we got to sing along, ginseng. So we talked about ginseng out there in the woods. We saw those plants. Talk about how they're getting to be an endangered plant. And you know, as I say, saying, I don't hardly ever dig roots anymore, but I have this one ginseng root. And when you look at it, you can see how it grows. Here's the root down in here. And, um, and you can see these little scars here. Each scar represents a year of growth because every year it puts out a new little bud. There was a bud that was gonna be the next year's growth. So if you sat there and you counted this, 15, maybe 16 years old. So this little root may be 16 years old. And you know, even though ginseng might sell for many hundred dollars a pound, Realize this thing doesn't even hardly weigh an ounce, probably hardly weighs even a quarter of an ounce. It took 15 years to get to that size. So you can see why digging up ginseng can be really, can really seriously deplete a population. I have a bunch of leaves. So I found a lot of ginseng plants last year. The leaves have a lot of the same medicinal and rejuvenating properties as the root. So what I often do is we make a little ginseng tea. Fresh spring water, just pulled it in from our spring. and just basically put some heat to it. Let it simmer for a little while. We'll have us some nice sang tea. A lot of the mountain people don't call it ginseng, they call it sang. Go sang hunting in Nepal, go sanging. So we'll drink us some of this tea 
after a while here, and we'll be singing. We got sing along.